It's my pleasure to uh, welcome you to this afternoon's uh, EOL seminar and our speaker, Teruyuku Nakajima. Yeah. Uh, so, big list here. Uh, Terry graduated from Tohoku University, uh, where his PhD work was on radio transfer through the atmosphere ocean coupled system. And he's continued working on radiation for the rest of his career, as far as I can tell. Uh, he has a statistic of having ele over 11,000 citations in his publications. Pretty impressive. Um, he's currently director of, well, formerly uh, was the director of the Center for Climate System Research in the University of Tokyo, and has recently become the director of Earth ob of the Earth Observation Research Center for JAXA, the Space Agency. J Japanese Space Agency. I'm sure you'll hear more about that. Um, lots and lots of service activities, including being the president and currently the secretary general of uh, the International Radiation Commission. Uh, has been an IPCC lead author and review editor, among lots of things. Has had several awards j from Japanese Meteorological Society, uh, Nissan Science Award, uh, Pergamon Press Award, for <laughs> and uh, and the Fujiwara Award just uh, last year. So it's our pleasure to Thank welcome Terry. And as media, uh, I'm supposed to turn on. Hello, um, do you hear me? Yeah. Nice meeting you. I know uh, uh, Jürgen Jensen and, uh, and uh, John is here. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> uh, two Johns, I'm sorry. John Gillies. Yeah, it's a long time friend, but uh, this is my first time to visit NCAR. And it's uh, nice meeting you. And uh, my name is Teruyuki Nakajima. I, I um, as introduced, I'm a research center director of JAXA. And my name is Teruyuki, but uh, when I was, I spent uh, three years in NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. I was uh, astonished to hear my uh, yeah, name called, called by the, uh, the, the computer center staff. That is, Mr. Teriyaki. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so people start calling me Terry. So this is <laughs> Terry is not like uh, the, the American name, but the teriyaki is Terry. And uh, you know the Sukuro Manabe, the famous dynamist from Japanese. But he's uh, his uh, Sukuro Manabe is a first, his the, the right name, but uh, people couldn't call him. So that becomes Sukiyaki. <laughs> then he is called, being called as Suki. That is the origin. So the good name, the food is a good, the name for the good professor in <laughs> Japan, Japan. So I got, yeah, Yan asked me to talk about the remote sensing. So I, I'm going to talk about the remote sensing. But I still have, uh, also have a, a modeling activity or chemistry. So I'll really touch on that. And I just retired from the University of Tokyo this March. So I got 300 people coming. But uh, I met uh, this beautiful woman, <laughs> this club singer in Tokyo on some day, three years ago, four years ago. And I, I said, uh, I'm about to retire. Then uh, what is the next hobby? Then I want to sing, to learn the singing. So she said, yeah, you can come to me. I can teach you. Then uh, after three years, I had a good experience. Then I invited the three unit, three ladies unit, called a Lady Q, the leading by my uh, led by my uh, English uh, music teacher. Then I introduced them to the uh, my uh, uh, celebration party. Then the, the dedicated professor, who is a professor Sato, who is an inventor of the Nikka modern. He was so upset. This is very precious. Terry, you, you are going to introduce uh, club singers into our <laughs> celebration. Don't do that. But I, I dare do that. Then it's very successful. <laughs> so uh, I got a fun. But anyhow, um, uh, in this celebration, I uh, talked about my uh, the summary of my progress in my group with my students. So today, I'm going to talk about 
my old history, not the cutting edge science. So please hear this long time ago, far, far away, you know, <laughs> that kind of story I'm thought to talk to you. Um, in Mitchell published the, the Nature paper 95 about the cancellation of global warming by 40% by sulfate aerosols. And uh, this is a situation without uh, sulfate aerosols. It's much warmer than what we observed. Then he put the air sort of mimicking, you know, changing albedo, but this climate, old time climate modeling. So they changed the uh, surface albedo to mimic the uh, uh, refraction by aerosol particles. Then the similar, uh, about the same time, the, the Charleston had the science paper to show how much energy re reflected because the aerosol radiative forcing, which is minus 1.3 watt per square meters. So you have uh, solar radiation and the change in the cl uh, aerosol optical depth, AOT or AOD, which is about 0.04 and the backscattering ratio, back scaling ratio of aerosols, and uh, this is a uh, ground refraction term, and this is uh, the that, that transmittance term, two-way transmittance term above the aerosol layer, and then this is cloud amount. So this calculation is easy to get the 1.3 but per square meter. Now this is direct, uh, direct refraction of aerosol to cool our system, but at the same time, at that time, ship trail clouds are found by uh, like a uh, uh, the NASA people and uh, uh, Universal Oregon has a John, uh, I forget the name. Yeah. You can see the uh, the green observations starting yeah, yeah. to fall of the CO2, and then it drops. Is that about the time the sulfates were produced more from? I think around here so. And But this area, uh, I think the sun, solar irradiance is larger than average. So this is warmed up, heat up by the yeah. solar activity. Okay. So this is a, this undulation comes. But anyhow, ship trail cloud, if you put the ship, then the stack has a lot of CCN aerosols, then the cloud is activated. So this is an indirect effect of aerosol, cool down the system. So there are two effects. The question is, which is big? So Charleston and uh, Mitchell explain this uh, cooling only by aerosol uh, sulfate. But you know, single scan B, the SSA is one, which means a non-absorbing aerosol. The aerosol totally reflects the solar radiation by 1.0. But nowadays, we, do, we know this is wrong. So I started the work to make uh, with uh, Michael King at the NASA Goddard uh, I visit, when I visited. Then I tried to put the, the uh, uh, satellite received radiance or aircraft received radiance in short wave like a visible channel. And this is 2.1 micrometer, which is a water, liquid water absorbed the radiation. So the cloud particle is very large than the wavelengths and the uh, optical depth is so large, more than one. And the absorption is very small because the liquid water absorption is very small, but not negligible. So this one. So that the cross section for the scattering is uh, out to the second. The absorption is uh, water absorbed, is uh, like a volume, so out to the third. So the one minus omega, which one minus single scan albedo, is the, this ratio. The total extinction divided uh, and the uh, nominator as the opt absorption optical cross section. So this is proportional to the R. Then the, the near infrared uh, area reflectivity can be calculated by uh, like a simple theory easily. Then the first approximation is like a one plus s, one minus s. S is a similarity parameter, almost square root of uh, co albedo. This is co albedo. So this term is proportional to square root of the particle radius. So if you, so this axis, so, so near infrared, weak absorption channels in the near infrared can is respond to the particle radius. So like a th for two micron, four micron, eight micron, 16 micron, 32 micron in radius of cloud particles. On the other hand, visible, so visible time, the 
omega is 1. So in that case, the other equation like this, um, by the asymptotic theory, so that the reflectivity is almost proportional to the inverse of optical depth. So that uh, we can get from this axis, get the optical depth of cloud, cloud optical thickness, COT for H16, H30. So by this diagram, we can get the particle radius as well as the optical depth. So this is a kind of a remote sense, first generation remote sensing from MODIS to get the uh, cloud properties. Then we apply this one to the aircraft measurement, a UW aircraft, and uh, I think uh, UK Met Office brought some uh, radiometer. But anyhow, the, this tandem flight get the uh, 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 radiometer scanning with this visible and near infrared. We call the uh, cloud, cloud, multi, multi MCR, multi, multi wavelength cloud <coughs> images on board the NASA ER2 to measure this 30 by 150 kilometer segment on July 10th in the uh, 80, 1987, which is a, a time of the first ISKIP regional experiment. We call the FIRE 87 for Californian summer stratus case, like this. So that shallow clouds, water clouds, occupy this area in summertime. So this is strike Q. So they, me we me they measure this uh, radiance. Then I translated this one to the particle radius and optical depths of the cloud. S cloud optical thickness and effective particle radius. So this is a COT versus RE diagram we call. Then so this segment, we have a large uh, optical depth, but the particle radius in this area is smaller. So July 10 case is like this. So large optical depths have smaller uh, particle radius. And the smaller optical depths have large particle radius, so in this segment. But this is 1987. And after I returned to Japan, I grew, grew, raised my student to uh, try the AVHR remote sensing, these satellites. This one is uh, the ER2 flight, cloud uh, aircraft data, but this one is 100 by 500 by 500 kilometer segment for the uh, entire region. Then we found out this, this one is this flight segment. So you can see the thick cloud optical depth area here, then thin area here. Then the, this particle radius field, the thin small particle radius and large particle radius. But if you look at, this is Nakajima and Nakajima papers, 95. But anyhow, if you look at in this big view, this area has a very small partic optical depth. Optical, the cloud is very thin in op optical sense and very thick. Here is, we have very large particles. So this is a small cloud optical depths with very large particles. Well, that means, you know, those areas drizzling. So a lot of uh, drizzle pop particles there, so that they lose liquid, cloud liquid water. Then those drizzle particles very large, so, so, so like this. But in this segment, we have a you know, continental airflow like this, so that a lot of CCN comes in this area, so that cloud uh, doesn't have much precipitation and the uh, cloud optical depth becomes large, and the particle size becomes small. So from this big view, I can understand why we had such a seg uh, segment from this uh, uh, aircraft. But anyhow, um, like uh, we see the open cell here. Then here's a closed cell, like a Danny Rosenfeld and other people said that the, if you have small CCN, the, the rain starts and they're making open cell, but you have you know, more CCN, the closed cell, like this, very thick, and no precipitation, the cloud gets thicker. So this kind of things. Then we just uh, made a simple COT versus uh, RE uh, diagram, uh, scatter plot. Then looks like this, this shape we found, like a lady's high heel type. Uh, so we call the high heel shoe type uh, pattern. Then. Although I, this is just a satellite remote thing, I just speculate with my student. Like aer aerosol or cr small cloud particles, 
embryo, baby of cloud particles, getting bigger, was absorbing the water vapor, growing. Then was very, getting very large, and then the gravitational falling, precipitation starts. So precipitation lose your liquid water, liquid water, cloud liquid water. Then get thin enough to get the sunlight to di evaporate the system, so like this. So this triangular shape is this, these things. So this was a speculation at this time, but, uh, but recently, uh, like Suzuki, Kenta Suzuki with the Graham Stevens groups, three years ago, four years ago, had a simulation, successful simulation of this kind of shape. Um, b with the beam model, uh, beam, beam spectral model with the particle growth mechanism. So this kind of pattern can be simulated. And the more recently, like uh, Graham, Graham Feingold made the nature paper for open closed cell simulation with his beam model. Then this is another simulation with the uh, Yosuke Sato, this is young, young, young stu of my student, you know, using this uh, K computer, which is tempered flops machine. I think this is a uh, world number ten or something like a large scale computer to simulate this one with LES, with with a two moment bow cloud scheme with five meters grid grid scale. So a very beautiful transition about open cell to. Uh, closed cell to open cell with the kind of this kind of uh, uh, segment. So um, from satellite, if you look at the COT and RE, we can get what is the cloud stage and what is the stage of interaction with the aerosol. Can be observed from satellite if you can mix this kind of uh, uh, protein. So again, those are like a maritime situation. All the very thin and, uh, you know, this, all the leftover things. But here is, we have this uh, growth pattern, pattern. And this part is, I think, this end. But anyhow, um, so this are cloud optical depths and cloud optical particle radius is good, inf carry the good information about the cloud lifetime. Uh, simulation. So this is one simulation where the uh, uh, s this small CCA maritime case for the Californian summer, the five meters LES simulation to one man bulk with the ski computer. This is a large CCN case without much precipitation. So uh, nowadays, you know, the Graham's, Gra Feingold's group and our groups, you know, our group ten comes to this this stage for uh, simulating the uh, the CCM interaction of, of with these shallow clouds, cloud system, and uh, w w that can be observed by the uh, by the satellite. Then I get we get the global view, again the still AVHR but global simulation. The Han et al. 94 has uh, used the uh, ESCIP data to get this kind of information, but we made the scratch the, uh, algorithm from scratch to analyze the AVH of radiance itself, the Kalamoto et al. They made this kind of figures, particle radius, global image. The interesting thing is that the smaller particles around uh, this, uh, this Japan, uh, sorry, this is Japan and uh, China and uh, India and uh, Africa and uh, America. So large particle along the, uh, uh, the um, uh, ocean areas. So the reason, why this reason is, so the simple idea is that, you know, that's a Toomey's effect. You have more aerosols than the, cr if the liquid water uh, supply is limited, then the particle radius, cloud particle radius should be smaller. So you can measure the RE from uh, satellite. So this is a good key parameter to understand the cloud aerosol interactions. But we need a number of aerosol from satellite. So I just uh, made another study with my student, other students, Higurashi, those. 
Then we use the, the, the this is an aerosol case, so clear sky. We have uh, uh, deflectance by aerosols, so optical depth, single screen albedo, backscattering coefficient, and like this. And the other part is just transmitted to the surface and reflected by the surface. So uh, the aerosol, in this case, aerosol effects is uh, transmittance case, one minus omega, the forward scattering. So this is, so two competing effects there, because if you increase the optical depth, this term increase, but this term decrease. So um, it's a to satellite received uh, radiance has those two effects, but if that like an ocean, dark surface, and optical depth is so small, then this term dominates. So you can you can get this this simple formula. Then then if you have a two wavelengths, like uh, in this case, 640 red cha red channel, or this short wa short infrared infrared radi uh, radiance channel, you can get this kind of uh, net. And uh, this axis is optical depth at the, the standard wavelengths. Then the, this slope is the particle radius, uh, the, the uh, Omstrom exponent. We, we, we call this, this uh, uh, relationship as uh, Omstrom's law. The wavelengths, this optical depth, optical thickness of layer. So this is a semi-empirical one, but if you assume that the power law size distribution is a power of p, you can get the, this equation analytically. So p and alpha relationships, this one. So uh, usually, unit size distribution p equal four, so that's the global average. So uh, if you put the p four, then uh, alpha is one. So uh, optical depth of aerosol is inversely proportional to the wavelength. So this is a kind of a semi-empirical relationship we know. But um, we can apply this theory to the uh, uh, satellite remote sensing. Having two wavelengths, then we can get the uh, uh, particle radius. Uh, 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 AOT, aerosol optical thickness, or I mean, NASA people say aerosol optical depth, AOD, doesn't matter, at uh, 500 nanometers wavelengths. And, uh, this slope again is uh, Ongstrom's exponent alpha. Then again, I said that the alpha is related with the particle is exponent. This is kind of a particle size index. Ongstrom exponent is a particle size index. So smaller particle, if you the aerosol include, have a small particle, alpha becomes large. And thus particle mostly p equals three. So in that case, alpha becomes zero. So that, that case, you, we see that there is a large particle in the atmosphere. So this kind of remote sensing we did. Then finally, we made, we made this uh, chart. Finally, we get the aerosol optical depths and uh, cloud droplet radius from satellite. This, this is a telemodis uh, result. And this is our simulation. In parallel, we, we, we had the climate modeling, modeling of this. Uh, situation. Then if you look at this uh, aerosol distribution, optical depth distribution, it's very similar to this pattern. So this is a manifestation of aerosol interaction with cloud. Then like a two means effect and uh, like this. The large particles or small particles, large drop, cloud droplet small cloud droplets, more shiny and reflecting a lot of uh, radiation. So this case happens. Then we know the Ongstrom exponent. So I, I made a lot of calculation, then uh, we can define the product of alpha times optical depth, alpha times tau 500. This is proportional to the column aerosol numbers, particle numbers. Uh, you can see the equations in these papers. So now we can get the uh, column aerosol numbers. And we understand the cloud droplet layer, so cloud optical thickness, or even uh, liquid water pass, the cloud, liquid water pass the cloud, cloud water. Then we can calculate the, uh, the like, uh, radiative forcing 
due to air, increasing aerosol number from uh, industrial, industrial revolution until now. How much cloud, cloud aerosol particle increase? We kind of have uh, some estimates, so we can do it. So like a minus 0.7 to minus 1.7 watt per square meter is our solution. So this is the older, uh, the newer similar estimation. Then the direct estimation, a uh, direct forcing is just uh, not, this is aerosol change the cloud optical reflectance, then the, the uh, radiative forcing uh, happens, which is negative, cool our system. But at that time, the aerosol itself uh, uh, reflect the solar radiation. This is uh, this uh, very early. This uh, Mitchell's calculation, Charleston's calculation, all the uh, uh, by scal direct scattering by aerosol particle, which is one minus one point three watt per square meters. But uh, at this moment, early two thousand with my group and the other group, tends to show the direct forcing is much smaller than the indirect forcing. That is because in this case, we have, uh, we know the, you know, single scan albedo aerosol is not the one, like a 0.95, so we put this number uh, to calculate, so the all the, the, the aerosol is not reflecting the solar radiation, but some absorb, like a black carbon absorb, so this this becomes smaller and smaller, and this effect is getting larger and larger. The next question is that how how we can simulate this one by the model, climate model? Then the climate model we need to translate the uh, cloud water to rain. We call the auto conversion of the cloud water. So the water conversion parameterization, this is a rate constant, is proportional to the uh, cloud droplet numbers. Then having the power here, we call the exponent, auto conversion rate exponent alpha. Then Kessler shows th th there is no no aerosol in a cloud droplet number dependence. So very simple case, very traditional case. Then the, we did the simulation by using climate model. We call that Miroku. This is Japanese climate model with the Sprinter's aerosol model to do this calculation. So you would. would we calculate the uh, number of particles by the uh, aerosol model, then this liquid water uh, pass of the cloud, which is generated by the climate model. Then uh, we have a negative force, negative correlation like this. This is very natural because um, clean, aeros clean aerosol environment tends to have a thick cloud with precipitation. So scavenging, washout process, clean our environment, reduces the particle radius, aerosol particle radius. With the, like a clean, clear sky, like a high pressure region, there's no cloud for scavenging. So that the aerosol particle number also increase. So very natural to get this uh, negative correlation by the model. Then this is our AVHR retrieval. Uh, again, I said we can get the uh, Ongstrom exponent alpha from satellite clear sky region and the optical depth of aerosol. So we can multiply it like this. And this is a kind of a, um, um, approximation to this uh, aerosol column aerosol numbers. So we understand this one. Then liquid water pass, we can we have a cloud optical depth and particle radius, so multiplication get the uh, liquid water pass on the column. So we can get this diagram. So the amazing thing in the diagram is that there is no negative correlation like this. Almost independent, very flat. Although there is a noise like this, but uh, still we, s we do not have this one. Then we introduce this alpha as one. So air rate constant of our auto conversion rate is um, getting slower if you have a large cloud droplet number. I mean, uh, uh, no, no, uh, getting large, rate constant getting large with more cloud 
particles. So, so we, we assume, and this, in this case, linearly independent. Then we start having this one becomes like this. So it looks like you know, liquid water pass of the cloud system does not depend on aerosol numbers. Which is very similar to this one. So this alpha should be one around uh, if the, if we s emulate uh, mimic the, uh, the reality by climate model with this old conversion mechanism. But this is very strange, you know. Cloud liquid water pass does not depends on the aerosols, existing aerosols. So uh, looks like. You don't need the aerosol effect to the cloud generation. But real situation, uh, if there is no dependence, so we don't have this term, zero, then we, reality is like this. So this one is kind of a fig, apparent relationship between uh, aerosol and cloud interaction. So this, this is a manifestation of like a, a cloud scavenging effect. So this one is really the cloud. Uh, this, this situation in, is the manifestation of cloud lifetime effect. Well, this is, looks very strange, but this is the, what model said and observation said. So by this one, uh, we, we claim that the, we found the cloud lifetime effect quite independent. Effect is there in our uh, globe. But the time goes, then uh, we have uh, more data coming, like, uh, like a Graham Feingold's paper. In that case, you know, this information, like particle radius, Effective particle is cloud particles. How, how much change due to the change of aerosol optical depth? You can replace this one NA particle uh, drop in aerosol numbers. S so kind of a slope, sensitivity slope. And the two me case, if you increase aerosol numbers or aerosol optical depths, uh, particle radius should be sm getting smaller. So this should be negative. So this is this case. If you, you put the aerosol, the, this shallow convective cloud in this area react in a way that precipitation quenched. So the optical depth increase. So, and the particle radius gets smaller. So this situation. But uh, we did a similar simulation in the other side of uh, the Pacific, this area. Um, then we put the, the uh, CCM, but the C crowd fraction never changed compared to this, this case. Little, b because this one, this case, the surface ocean is, is a warmer than this, this side. So that, that convection is a little bit uh, uh, thicker uh, compared to this one. This is shallow convection, but this is kind of not deep, too much deep, but we, because we select the only water cloud situation. But even in that case, CCN doesn't, cloud doesn't respond with the CCN put. So B, R, E is almost zero. And uh, the more data come, like uh, uh, Chanjin Lee's group, Maryland University, they claim that they found that the that, like, anti tumi effect, which is this becomes positive. So those areas. Then I summarize those data, uh, the observation and the modeling result in a chart like this. Uh, I, I published this one in Charleston, Heinz and Charleston paper, MIT 2009, one of the Michael Schultz. I pa made a pa paper with, it, with him to make this uh, particle slope, uh, sensitivity slope of particle radius in this COT. And uh, in that case, um, liquid uh, cloud, cloud droplet, cloud particle size times COT is liquid water pass. 
the total liquid water of the cloud, the column liquid water. So if you make a derivative by the log NA, taking logarithm of those, so this becomes plus plus. So in terms of this kind of a slope, sensitivity slope, this one B R E plus B C O T. Then the two me said that this should be zero in the case of a cloud aerosol interaction. So this should be um, like this, this minus this. So this this line is a two me line. So along along this one, there is no change in the grid of pass, even you put more aerosol numbers. So like this, we made this kind of a uh, uh, statistical analysis, then we, we uh, get the, all those data set from the literatures. Then uh, orange is observation and uh, blue is uh, modeling result. So most data come in these areas. So along here, we have a, a kind of to me effect. Then um, with aerosol getting small, uh, aeros uh, cloud droplet getting smaller with aerosol increasing aerosol number. And in that case, if the cloud optical depths increase more than this uh, line, so this area, lifetime effect is large because uh, cloud droplet tends to survive longer than the two means condition. So it looks like many uh, data coming here. This is satellite data and the uh, climate mornings. So we can say that the uh, two me effects is there, uh, this cloud albedo effect, but at the same time, cloud lifetime effect is also there. So that is uh, our reality at the global mean from satellite and the model tells. But the interesting thing for the next uh, stage is that those triangular point, which comes from land areas. Land cloud, drop, uh, cloud system react a little bit different from those ocean, this circularized ocean data. Like uh, particle radius can get bigger with increasing cloud uh, aerosol numbers. So this is totally anti me reaction. So the land, land clouds looks like a little bit different from the, uh, the ocean uh, case for responding to the aerosol uh, increase. And I also made uh, such a slope for the cloud fraction. This is a, um, a to me doesn't tell about the cloud fraction, but the subtle observation can get this number and also models can get. So I, I did this calculation. And uh, again, um, crowd amount can increase with increase of, uh, um, of uh, aerosol numbers. So again, those are land aerosol, land cloud. And the other one is more uh, this side, which means you put the aerosol, the particle gets smaller then the, tends to be evaporated by the solar heating. So uh, cloud fraction tends to be smaller this side. This, but this side is um, lifetime, if, because of lifetime effect, cloud fraction can increase. The reality is like this. Lifetime effect is over, overcome this uh, evaporation case like this. But uh, m many models have this one. Tends, as soon as cloud droplets shrink, then the evaporation starts in the model. But what we observe from satellite, uh, more lifetime effects is larger. So that means you put the aerosol, the particle droplets get smaller over the ocean. At the same time, cloud, frac uh, cloud fraction increase. So this is the situation. Uh, then the next thing is we model this one with the fine um, we need a, a fine modeling, a fine scale modeling. And uh, I, 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 too much for this, so I just skip. So to summarize, again, the Mitchell's figure, famous figure, in 90s, 
people said that, that this cooling effect comes from the direct effect of sulfate, pure reflection by direct effect of aerosol particles. Then 2000, like AR4, IPCC AR4, direct effect is minus 0.5 watt per square meter because black carbon is there. Then the cloud albedo effect is minus 0.7. I think this increased the cloud indirect effect also. Then, in the 2000, it's a the recent uh, AR5, uh, IPCC AR5 said that the direct effect is much smaller because, you know, the people claim that BC has more absorption in Asian regions. So now this 0.2 becomes 0.3, and the cloud albedo effect is also getting smaller. That is because people, like, like my study, um, those areas like land aerosols or, or the ice, ice mixed phase cl cloud can react uh, with the aerosol increase. It totally re up, uh, the reverse order, the reverse direction from the ocean case. So th that means this is a cooling our system, though this is a warming our system. So, so like, le so uh, this again a little bit smaller. So total is now aerosol effects of minus 0.9, which is smaller than this one. So this is reality or not? It's not, not so clear because if, if we put this amount, we have very nice fitting to the observation. But this is, we don't need, we have not enough the uh, cooling effects to let the cl climate model to this mine. Although there is hundreds of uh, cloud model, uh, 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 climate models, so we need to be a bit careful to compare each by each. But anyhow, this is a kind of a general um, idea about our situation. So the summary is that the cloud optical thickness, particle radius, aerosol optical depth, and the on-stream exponent are key parameters for aerosol cloud interactions. And the important uh, equation is like this aerosol index, we call the AI is uh, aerosol ex uh, onstream exponent times aerosol optical depth, which is proportional to uh, aerosol uh, column numbers. Then uh, we found that the old conversion rate exponent alpha is about one, uh, which is an uh, uh, indirect effect uh, to be fit fitted by the, uh, the uh, climate model. Then in this case, LWP becomes independent of NA, which is kind of a strange situation, but this is what we, we need for this out conversion rate. Then the beam model is successful to simulate that is high heel type correlation between in the COT RE diagram. And the correlation slope B is very important to classify. Then now we, we start finding this uh, anti tumi type uh, effect. And uh, my guess is that land, air, land cloud system is much different from uh, ocean cloud system. So uh, because a stronger convection and the water vapor supply is more keep a bottleneck. So I think the water vapor and the convection study is needed to understand this, uh, the indirect effect, which is totally different from the two meter type interaction for the land areas. Then the, this is a, the, the new age uh, study using the, the cloud radar and the cloud sat. The future, we're going to have our, our European and Japan r scale satellite, which I am involved to develop. And this uh, uh, cloud depths, we understand. You, we can do this one because our radar system is there. Then th this side is part of the uh, radar reflectivities. Then um, this ocean case and land case, you know, the shape is totally different like this. So the land area, we have a strong updraft, so the aerosol p cloud particles gets up, getting up, 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 upper layers compared to the ocean. Ocean region, the, the updraft is smaller, so gravitational falling makes um, more large particles toward the uh, cloud base. So this difference is very, uh, 
possible to be observed now. Then the question is that the modeling result. This is a Rams two moment model. This is a Nikam one moment model. Then always Nikam one moment could not make this kind of shape or, or like this shape. So this shape looks like uh, more resembling to the uh, Rams case. Then this difference is this one moment and this two moment bulk. That means a small cloud droplet becomes rain very quickly in this one, mom one moment. But two moments, you, you have two moments. So there's gradually changing. So we need a multi-model, which is a beam model type. Uh, cloud growth uh, system is needed to make this kind of a, uh, simulation. So um, from satellite now, we can have a this, uh, this one, the global average of uh, ocean, land, uh, vertical uh, structure of our radar reflectivities. Still, we need, uh, the, this is a global model, so we need to up, uh, elaborate to uh, slow down the, uh, the rainwater production. So getting slower, then we have more crowd water in the atmosphere. And uh, again, I said the ocean and land is different. Even for this B, B, slope B, that there is a difference. But if you look at this uh, kind of cloud CPR, uh, result, we have more more, more uh, clear evidence about the, this difference. So I really uh, you cloud microphysics, cloud, uh, cloud physicists to understand this process and observe this process to link with the, uh, what we uh, observe from satellite. Then I, I have aerosol part, but I, there is no time, so I just skip. I have uh, 40, so I will finish soon. Um, we did the aerosol, land aerosol, be because as I, again, the land, land cloud aerosol interaction is very important, but land aerosol remote sensing is very difficult task. Now, even more this blue, deep blue algorithm or Calypso, but still we need uh, more elaboration of liquid, uh, land aerosol remote sensing. We had a nice algorithm, but uh, there is no time for uh, going to that the, uh, the story, then I, I, I just show you summary uh, of this uh, new direction. CFOD is the method to use the uh, cloud profiling radar echo is uh, good for further classification of cloud lifetime stages. And satellite bone LIDAR is also used for estimation of the uh, aerosol uh, rated forcing in uh, above cloud conditions, but uh, I, didn't mention, I didn't explain this one by the figures. And the uh, new algorithm for uh, near ultraviolet radiation channels for the imager to get land air. So this is also not, t not explained. I'm sorry, then I have five minutes before 50 minutes. I, I just go to the some modeling result. This is a report. Mm -hmm because uh, many groups are related with this, not m only my group. Then we have a uh, non-hydrostatic icosahedron atmospheric models developed by uh, uh, Professor Sato, who is uh, chair of my uh, retirement ceremony <laughs> committee. <laughs> he's upset by the lady cube. <laughs> But anyhow, he's a very dedicated scientist for the cloud dynamics. So he made this one. And this is fully compressive, no hydrostatic for effect form equations and uh, allowing the acoustic uh, waves also. Then uh, there is a cloud single moment, a double moment. So those are uh, development. And Araka uh, Schubert um, for large, uh, this grid size becomes 100 kilometer, then turn on this a large scale cumulus, but the smaller scale, we, we just follow the dynamics. And uh, radiation, so my group, and ours, then we run this one, our simulators, then the champion data is this one, three and a half kilometer simulation. This is a uh, geostationary satellite, the uh, modern jury observation. observation. This is uh, what we simulate from this model. But uh, my, so this is, an, so, 807 meters global simulation result with this one. 
But this is on the K computer with 10 petaflops machine in located in Kobe with the n world number 11 supercomputer. So this is just a single bulk cloud scheme or the um, bridge side of 800 something meters. But <laughs> cloud, cloud is not so realistic without much, you know, vertical layers. So we should increase the number of vertical layers, the typhoon simulations. But okay, then oh, next step is we put the uh, materials like aerosol and uh, this is CO2 and this is isotope calculation. The, Isotope calculations we really got with this uh, Nikon model because a very good uh, uh, water mass mass balance mass flux form so mass conservation is very good so we can get the very good uh, minimum uh, of uh, delta or eighteen in the polar regions and uh, this is a, um, a CO two simulation ten kilometer simulation and typhoon coming to uh, Japan. This is a Japanese. Uh, this is a African dust particle. Red is a large particle. And then this is a biomass burning from uh, Africa, and this one is uh, the Pacific side. Then we can get the typhoon. Then red red color is the sea salt, large aerosol particles generated gust from gust of uh, typhoon uh, circulation. So the green color is uh, continental air pollution and. Uh, large particle with the lead is uh, the coarse part, co uh, mineral dust particle from uh, desert area in the uh, Chinese continent. The good thing with this is that we have uh, three grid system like uh, uh, like uh, this is a uh, icosahedron we, we, by segment making the, such a fine resolution, but still this is a globally uh, uh, the homogeneous. But, Perfect, not perfectly homogeneous. It's impossible to to cover the uh, globe by uh, sphere by the equal distance, equal uh, this tri triangle. It's impossible. But any the, the kind of a quasi homogeneous grid. Then we can. Well, then also we have this uh, stretched grid with a Schmidt trans trans transformation by the map map transformation. Then we have more grids calculation grids to the target areas. Then the other side of the globe has a coarse grid. Then we can run one segment for the regional run. So the, this NICOM can run. NICOM uh, aerosol model sprinters or chemistry model can run on the usual uh, personal computers. But for this one, we have the, the supercomputer. But if you use this uh, one, uh, we can run the, this 10 kilometer simulation around here with a normal supercomputer. So this is a great benefit for us to calculate the, uh, uh, you know, the aerosol transportation. This is the ozone RPC black carbon simulation for the, the coarse resolution homogeneous grid. This is a stretched grid. So we have a 10 kilometer resolution here, but the other side of 500 kilometers. Large grids. Uh, the computing time is about the same, so we have a fine this uh, SO, SO4 calculation. Then the amazing thing is that this can do this simulation. This is a contour area, so this is only th uh, uh, 50 by 50 kilometers, for example. From the same, with the same calculation, we can get the, this continental scale calculation to this one. Then. Uh, this is a Tokyo Bay, so this size is like 10 kilometers. So, so the 10 kilometer scale calculation. Then this is a ozone simulation with, with our model Nikon cam, and this is a WARF CMAP models calculation. This is observation. The good for the Japanese area is we have a dense observation site, like those are also. So the, at the August 7th, 12 noon. We don't have uh, much aerosol, uh, ozone production, but that uh, 
3 p.m., we have a strong ozone production, which is well simulated by this one. But the WARF tends to be dispersed too much. I don't know why, but uh, in this case, the uh, uh, Nikam Kelm has a very good simulation of this pattern. And also, we have the simulation for the Fukushima's nuclear power accident. So this is point source cesium-137 cesium, cesium calculation. This is a WAF cam, WAF CMAC. This is a sprinter's Nikam, Nikam sprinters. And so this is a river type simulation, very well simulated, but the WAF tends to be dispersed too much. And this is a surface observed value. This circle is a surface observed value. Come from the, uh, this is interesting, this suspended particle matters network. So those many areas has this data set with this sampling data. Every one hour they suck the air to get the aerosol sample for the purpose of air pollution monitoring. But we, we retrieved this <laughs> tape from making a lot of phone call to get this one, to put this one to scintillation counter to measure the cesium-137 for all those sites. So those are, those are point. So th this is totally new way of measuring this uh, uh, radioactive material. But anyhow, this narrow strip is the uh, enhanced area, which is well simulated by this one, although the uh, plume is a push, little bit push more, more, more to the west. But compared to WARF, tends to disperse too much like this. So uh, um, this is uh, what we did. We did this uh, uh, new framework. Then we did the uh, uh, inversion technique, common filter method. So this SO2 dust and CISO. This inverted this standard uh, emission inventory. This is uh, what we observed from. I think this is a MODIS satellite data with the air net surface data to be input to the get this uh, inverted uh, flux emission. And the interesting thing is that we can apply this one to the Japanese sites. So we have a lot of uh, observation sites like this. So we can get like a, like a SO2 in this Tokyo areas. So those are observation sites, and we did the assimilation process to get what, the, what how many, how much uh, SO2 is emitted in this area. The interesting thing is that, this is the last slide. I'm sorry I took too much time. This is a CO2 uh, emission calculation. So this is an industrial area emitting a lot of CO2 by the, the industries. And this is Tokyo Bay. So this is a Tokyo downtown area. A lot of you know, the car emissions of CO2, which is, and this is uh, SO2 inversion to how much aerosol uh, SO2 is emitted compared to the uh, standard emission run, control run. Then this, uh, this simulation said we need a more emission of SO2 in this area and that area, which is ex exactly similar to that. So b although those two data are independent, this is uh, so CO2 data from a GOSAT satellite, and this is SO2 data from uh, uh, the surface observation network. So I really want to do this kind of calculation to understand you know, the, how much material people, uh, the, the human activities emit for such a terrain size regions. The summary is that we developed the NICAM TM isotope and chemistry develop of material simulation, then three grid systems, good for, to cover the global to the local regions until the one kilometer. Below that, we need a uh, LES, but we don't have LES for this moment. And the simulation inversion system is developed with, with the CAM, and the uh, interesting subject is the comparison of SO2 CO2 emission uh, from such an inverse system. Yeah, sorry, I, 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 uh, I <laughs> A very sloppy talk, but uh, I finished my talk. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm a very disorganized person, so don't uh, please allow me. We can probably ask a few questions.
So, Terry, you gave a very wide-ranging set of subjects. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> But um, let's say that somebody came to you and said, um, here's funding for four new scientists. What subject would you pick for them, and uh, what should they be doing? Young or old? <laughs> Young. <laughs> Yeah, then I think now it's, I think the mixed cloud interaction with the aerosol is a very intriguing uh, subject for us because, make, as I, again, uh, by the slope story, uh, that is very unknown. You know, the satellite gives you some yeah, key, but uh, not well understood. Then uh, the other one is like a, like a SO2, CO2 inversion technique. But not, this is not a global, but you know, even regional, we can do it now. It's very interesting this along the road you have CO2 emission, which is catched by such a you know, network data set if you have a good uh, regional model. The, my, uh, our point is that we, we seamlessly connecting from globe to the local with the stretch system. Well, yeah, I have a question about this. Sorry. The climate modeling and how this information can be included in present-day climate models to determine these effects on uh, climate. For the aerosol interaction or yeah. the... Well, let's just say aerosol input into the atmosphere and the ultimate or resulting climate effects. Yeah, I I, although I am uh, the member of I IPCC R5 uh, chapter, or I forget the radio forcing chapter, but still I don't understand this uh, change from uh, to the AR4 to AR5 change. Um, oh, sorry. So. Direct might be getting smaller with the larger piece. This is reasonable, but this process, there are a lot of, but uh, you know, the reference and papers we studied, and just numbering, num just the number, matter of number. But uh, we do not check what mechanism get this difference getting smaller. I, I think, yes, what we we feel is that a lot of various. Uh, response by the cloud, not like a fine gold, the shi shallow convective cloud, which is a perfect case for the strong interaction. But most of the cloud is like a, not the full adiabatic and not not only water cloud and ice cloud, which respond to the other way, which means insensitive way that even you put there, so cloud do not respond to the like a Tumi effect type. But sometimes the other way or there is no no change. So I think this process should be included in the, the nowadays climate models. Well, to do so, we need a more um, fine resolution now. The climate model is coming to 20 kilometers. Well, maybe we need a final resolution to include this effect. So the cloud system is, parameterization is very important. So this morning I talked with the Graham at the North, and the, he, his plan is to do a lot of simulation with the regional model, then parameterize that it to input to the uh, climate model. It's a new parameterization of cloud aerosol interaction, especially. But the Graham, Graham's group doesn't have uh, what the ice clouds study, but we really need the ice clouds uh, data set with the aerosol. But I think to do so, we need a high resolution like AOES with the cloud beam model, uh, ice, ice phase, a lot of effort needed, which is for young, young generations. I think we'll, we'll cut it off here. Thank you But very much. People can ask it later. Thank you. Thanks again.